Oh. Well, hey. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. This is Brian. I just got in the mail a Stanley number no. four. Now this is the gold standard of planes. So I'm super excited to get into it. Before I've been working with a cobalt, so this is gonna be a massive upgrade. So let's take a look to see what's inside the box and see how it works. So let's tear into this bad boy. So right off the bat, I really think this packaging is cool. It looks like something out of the 40s or the 50s that you would get from Sears and Robux or something. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> Now inside the box comes wrapped in plastic and paper as well. And there she is. Just a beautiful looking plane. So normally in these packages, I think this is trash, but for a plane like this, I really want to take a look at this page right here. This shows the bevel types that you can put on this plane. And I want to make sure that this plane is completely set up perfectly so that it's easy to use and I don't have to mess with it a bunch every time I reach for it. So I've only set up a few chisels and planes in my life, but I did create this nice little lapping board. Now I got the idea for this by watching Tamar on 3x3 Customs. This is a great idea and it allows me to place my diamond stones into this slapping board and have them nice and secure. For this lapping board, I've got a 300 grit, a 600 grit, a 1200 grit, and of course the strop. So the first thing we need to do with this plane is to get the blade out of it. That's very easy to do by simply releasing this knob and taking the blade out. Now per the instructions, the blade comes with two pieces. At the top, there's a cap iron. At the bottom, there's a blade. Now the cap iron is to give the blade support and prevent chatter as you're running your plane across the board. At the tip of the cap iron, it's got a small bevel that pushes wood chips away from the cut. Now the bottom blade has already been honed at 25 degrees per the instructions and is ready to use. They do recommend that you put a micro bevel at the tip at 35 degrees. They also recommend that you flatten the back of this piece so that you can increase your accuracy. So that's what we're gonna do today. So first up, we're gonna remove the cap iron. That is easy to do by simply sliding it out of place. Now you'll see there's some protective oil still on the blade and we're gonna remove that. Now it's time to get our lapping board out. Now since the blade is made of A2 steel, which sounds like a great steak sauce, it is super strong, so we should really only need to use the 300 and 600 grit occasionally as we sharpen it. But for our first setup, we definitely want to use these two grits to get it to its finer flat back as well as the micro bevel. Now one thing you're going to want to use is lapping fluid. Now this bottle came free with some chisels I purchased. However, if you don't want to use that, you can use Windex. In fact, my first set of chisels, I was using almost entirely Windex. But since I have the slapping fluid, we're gonna use it. All right, so now we're gonna flatten the backside of this blade by running it through the process of the 300, the 600, the 1200, and then finally the strop. So let's put some lapping fluid on our 300 grit and we'll see what kind of indentions we get on the back. Now when we take a look at the backside of the blade, we wanna look to see where there's scuff marks. Now when we look at this blade, we can see some scuff marks here at the top, which is fine, but what I'm really concerned about are the scuff marks that run across the entire length of the blade. Now, I have a little bit of area here that I'd like to continue grinding down the blade just a tad because we want to see a scuff mark running across the entire length of the blade and have it nice and even. So let's continue to grind away. Now let's take another look at the blade and see where our scuff marks are. Now here we're getting closer. We're seeing that the scuff marks at the top are getting closer to the edge of the blade, but we still have a little bit of nick right there that I'd like to get some scuff marks on. The other side could probably use just a little bit too. So let's keep grinding away. Now as I'm doing this, I'm applying even pressure across the blade. I'm being forceful yet not too forceful. All right, that's pretty good for me. I think I'm gonna move on to the next grit. So let's move on to the 600 grit. In the same fashion, we're gonna put a little bit of lapping fluid on 
and we're going to grind this for about 75 to 100 strokes. All right, that'll do us for the 600 grit. Now let's move on to the 1200 grit. In the same fashion, I'm going to be going for about 100 strokes here. All right, that will about do it. Now let's move on to the stropping. Put a little bit of stropping compound on, and we're simply going to slide across that. All right, that'll about do it for the back side of the blade. One last thing we want to do is to make sure there's no burrs on the opposite side. So we'll simply just run it across the strop a couple of times, making sure that we have all the burrs removed. Then we can move on to put that micro bevel on the front of the blade at 35 degrees. So let's get to that. So since I'm not an expert in sharpening chisels and blades, I purchased a honing guide. Now this one is made by Veritas and is super easy to use by using this simple registration plate it allows you to set up your blade at the exact angle you want. In this case, I've set it to 35 degrees and we're gonna start on that micro bevel. Now, if you're really good at sharpening chisels, you can do this by hand. It's just my skill level isn't there yet and I don't wanna ruin this nice new blade. So first up, I'm gonna take some of the lapping fluid and pour it onto our stone. Then we just take our time going back and forth, and I like to count, so I like to do about 50 to 100 passes. All right, I can see that there's now a clean line across the very tip of this blade. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it's nice and even and very smooth. Now one thing, since these blades are made from A2 steel, you probably only need to use the 300 grit and the 600 grit every once in a while. Mainly you're gonna just be tightening up your blade with a 1200 grit as well as the strop. So now that we've gone through the 300, let's move on to the 600. Put on the stropping fluid and repeat the process. In this instance, I'm gonna do it about 50 to 100 times. And you can see here, once again, we have that nice little micro bevel, nice and even across the blade, and we'll continue on. Now it's time to do the 1200 grit. As before, we'll put on some stropping fluid. Once the stropping fluid is on, we'll repeat this process and go approximately 75 to 100 times as well. All right, now that we've gone through the 1200 grit, I'm going to take a look at the blade again. And if you can see there, there's a nice little micro bevel right there. Now one thing you will notice is that when you're doing this, you'll have a nice little burr at the opposite side of the blade. Right here. Now that is super easy to take off. And we're going to take it off right now, right before we do our strop. So I'm going to release the blade. And to take it off, it's very easy to do. Simply put the blade on the stone, take the blade, pull it back against the stone, and that burr will be removed. Now let's move on to the stropping. Now with the stropping, I like to do this by hand. And this is very easy to do. You simply take your little crayon looking thing, rub it on your stropping leather and by just doing a few quick pulls we should get a nice mirror reflection on that little micro bevel which I know you probably can't see it but it is nice and clean so now that we've sharpened the micro bevel I'm gonna give it a little bit of a test using the blade and you'll see it cuts the hair off my arm easily and simply. I like your kudgy. Now I just need to shave the rest of my arm. All right, now that our blade is sharpened, we're gonna add it back to our planer. So we'll simply add back this cap, tighten it on. Now that the blade has been added to the cap iron, we can simply slide it into our plane, making sure that we have everything aligned. Put the blade guard on top and tighten down the blade. Now it's just a matter of testing it out and see how it works. All right, now that we have our blade installed, let's take a look at some of the features of this number four Stanley. 
So setting up the blade can be a little tricky, and I'll admit I'm not an expert at it, but I do know just a tad to get by. So when we're looking down the face plate of the plane, we want to make sure that the blade is nice and even and there's no edge that's higher than the other. So in order to do that, we simply need to turn the blade over and do some micro adjustments by turning this knob so that we can have the blade completely in place and have a nice parallel blade line with the actual face of the plane. So now that we have the blade completely parallel and in line with the base of the planer, let's adjust the front guard. To do this, you simply unscrew this knob right here and with this little handle right here, you can increase or decrease the amount of space between the front guard and the blade. For me, I like to leave it fairly close to the blade, so I'm going to lock it down approximately right here. Now that we're all set up, let's do some test cuts. All right, I've got a piece of walnut here that I'm going to give a shot with. Now this is the first time I've ever used this planer, so let's give it a shot. So as I said, I'm not a hand tool expert. I deal mostly with power tools. So when I set this up, I had my blade way too far down. So when I was making my passes on this walnut board, it was catching almost every single stroke I made. Now that I've reduced the depth of the cut of the blade, it's moving much more smoothly across the board, creating nice shavings almost every pass. I probably still have the blade too far down, but it is starting to plane this surface and I'm really happy with the results. So as I said before, I'm not a hand tool expert, but I'm learning as I go and I really aspire to get the skills to be able to use hand tools more often. Unboxing the Stanley number no. four was a real pleasure of mine and I enjoyed learning along the way. As I showed before, it's not always perfect in setting up a new tool, especially when you're a beginning woodworker, but I'm pleased with the results now and I'm sure I have more to learn. If you have any suggestions or comments you'd like to share with me, I'd love to hear them. Thanks so much for tagging along with me today as I unboxed my Stanley Four Sweetheart. Even though my setup of this hand plane was not perfect, I learned a few things along the way and I hope you did too. If you get a chance, I'd love to get your subscription and I hope to see you again soon. Leave a like and take care as always.